So in this video, we're going to go through a handy rule of thumb for acid-base reactions. And if you looked at previous videos, you know that we talked about four, about the four different components of an acid-base reaction. We said that there's, there's the base, and there's the acid, and what you get when your base adds a proton is the conjugate acid. And when your acid loses a proton, this is the conjugate base. So four components, and you know that's your typical acid-base reaction. Now, why have I written it from left to right? I mean, what is stopping me from writing the reaction from right to left? I mean, that should be a valid acid-base reaction too, right? So let's just write that one out. Let's see, NaCl, so water plus NaCl gives you, that would give you Na plus OH minus, and then HCl. All right, and so that would be your acid, and that would be your base, and that would be your conjugate base, right? Because you've removed a proton from your acid, and this would be your conjugate acid. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this as an acid-base reaction, right? I mean, everything's in place. This is a valid acid-base reaction. So what am I missing? Well, you've probably done both of these reactions in your life at some point, right? You've probably taken in some lab the opportunity to take sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid and add them together. Well, what happens when you add concentrated sodium hydroxide to concentrated hydrochloric acid? It's a violent reaction, right? It generates a lot of heat. This is not something you just want to do in the absence of wearing safety goggles or something. You, you, you want to take safety precautions when you do this reaction. This is, a, you know, this is a violent reaction. So, and then it gives you water and sodium chloride. On the other hand, you know, when you take water and you add sodium chloride to it, um, is that an exciting reaction? Does that generate heat? Does that generate excitement? I mean, no, it's it's a lot. It's about as exciting as you know mowing the lawn or you know raking the leaves. It's not it's not an exciting reaction. Do we generate sodium hydroxide in HCl? No, we don't. To any appreciable extent, we don't. So why is it that this reaction on top works? It works violently well, and this reaction on the bottom doesn't work to any extent at all. This ties into what we were saying earlier about strong acids and bases. And acid strength, uh, strong and weak acids and bases. Now, if you remember from the previous videos, we were looking through the strengths of some very simple acids and bases. And we're comparing HCl, water, and meth. Oh, damn, that's terrible. How did that happen? Methane. And um, that wasn't actually used in the video. So we have HCl, which is our strongest acid, and we have methane, which is our weakest acid. And so HCl is a stronger acid than water. So in the first reaction we're talking about, we're going from HCl, a strong acid, stronger acid, to water, which is a weaker acid. So stronger acid and a weaker acid. Okay. And in terms of bases, we're going, remember on the bottom, on the right hand side here, these are the least stable. This is the strongest base, CH3 minus. So this is this is our strongest base on the bottom and it's our weakest base on top. So OH minus is a stronger base than Cl minus. So in other words, we're going from stronger base to a weaker base. Okay, and that reaction, as we know, works really, really well. Now, what about the reverse reaction? What's happening here? Well, we already said that we'd be going from water as our acid to HCl as our new acid or our conjugate acid. 
So we compared the strength of water and HCl, we already did that. We saw that we're actually going from a weaker acid to a stronger acid. And by the same token, with compared base strengths, we compare OH minus and Cl minus, we're going from a weaker base to a stronger base. And we know just from experiment that you know when you dissolve salt in water, you, you don't make um, any extent of, uh, you don't have a violent reaction. You're not making HCl and NaOH in any appreciable extent. So this, this reaction is very, we won't put an X because it may be a little bit, you know, 10 to the minus um, 28. Very unfavorable. Very unfavorable reaction. And this is very favorable. So knowing what we know from experiment and also what we know from the strengths of acids and bases, we can make the following statement for acids and bases for a reaction to be favorable. So the rule of thumb is this. You want to have a stronger acid and stronger base will give a weaker acid and a weaker base for a favorable acid base reaction okay so that's really the handy rule of thumb for acid base reactions so once you have a list of of different acids and you know their strengths you know you've got a stronger acid and you if you look at your your reaction is going from a stronger acid to a weaker acid and a stronger base to a weaker base, that's going to be a favorable acid-base reaction. And if you're going from a weaker acid and a weaker base to a stronger acid and a stronger base, it's going to be an unfavorable acid-base reaction. Now, the question of how favorable and how unfavorable, that's going to depend on um, a number we're going to talk about later called pKa. And when we talk about how to use a pKa table, you'll be able to actually determine exactly how favorable or unfavorable these reactions are. So if you're looking to quantify it, we'll, we'll get there. So like I said, that's the handy rule of thumb for acid-base reactions. And that's how you know if a reaction is going to occur 